In this video, I'll be using free software to remove unwanted pixels from my projection mapping facade. I'll show you how to create black areas by making basic shapes and more complex curved shapes. I'll also show you how to create soft feathered edges to your black areas and how to manually paint in black areas. I'll also show you how to make the black areas transparent if that's what you need for your project. So we'll be using GIMP, which is a free graphics editing application. Um, you can download it from the website. Um, I'll be using Windows, so I use this link. If you're on a Mac, you choose either one of these. This one if you have a slightly older Mac, this one if you have a newer one that has an Apple, Apple Silicon chip. So now we're inside GIMP, and this, I believe, is the default workspace, so hopefully we're all looking at the same thing. And the first step is to import our base facade image. So we can do that by coming here to File and going Open. And I'll just navigate to where I've saved my facade. I'll use this one, Open. And here I can see it's appeared in my layers panel as it, its own separate layer. And if you're not seeing the layers panel, make sure that you see it here under window, dockable dialogues and layers. And the other thing I want to import um, are my outlines or is my outline, my outline image. So I'm going to go to file again and this time select open as layers. And I will just find my outlines open. Great, so what I would really like to do is be able to see my outlines over the top of my base facade image. So the way I can do that is I can make sure my outlines are selected uh, in the layers panel and then come here to colors, invert. So now black is white, white is black, they've switched. And then set here where it says mode, normal, set that to screen. And now it's kept all the white areas and got rid of the black areas and I can see my outlines over the top. Um, you might want to reduce the opacity a bit if you don't want them quite as bold, um, but I'll keep mine at 100 right now. So I have my dungeon facade layer and then my outlines over the top, which I can switch on and off using this visibility toggle, this little eye, uh, off and then on. Um, what I'm going to do now is create a new layer for the black areas. So I can do that by clicking this little piece, piece of paper with a plus icon, click that, and create a new layer. I would like to fill it with transparency. So I'll keep it like that and say OK. And here's my new layer, sandwiched between um, my dungeon and my outlines, and I'm going to double click on this to rename it, and I will just call it black areas. Good, so in terms of uh, navigating, uh, uh, sort of moving your um, facade or zooming in and out and things like that, um, you can zoom in and out using um, the view menu. So zoom in and out and there are some um, shortcuts listed here. The way I'll, I'll be doing it is I'm holding down control on my keyboard and I'm using the scroll wheel of my mouse just to scroll uh, to zoom in and out like that. If you want to pan around, so that's move move around like this, you can do that either by um, clicking the scroll wheel of your mouse and doing it like that, or you can hold down spacebar on your keyboard um, and that's the hotkey for that as well. So the first thing I would like to do is, so personally I'm not going to project on the roof of my house. I only want to project on these front surfaces and I want there to essentially be black on the roof and I also don't want to keep these, uh, the bits of content here on the floor and on the sides. So I'm going to start adding some black areas um, here on the roof and, and in those regions as well. So I'm going to select the paths tool and I am just going to click around the bits I'm interested in to draw out a, a path shape and then fill it with black. So I am just going to click around the areas that I'm interested in. And if you misclick and you don't like the position of um, an anchor point that you've, you've placed, you can just 
click on it and drag it to a new location and edit it like that. Um, but bear in mind, if you do go back and do that, if you were to then keep clicking, you're actually creating a new shape. You haven't continued from the, the one you were previously clicking out. So if I just undo that, you need to make sure that you reselect this, uh, like the most recent node that you made or anchor point. And now with that kind of enabled, if you were to, click, were to carry on clicking, it'll add to that original shape. So just something to bear in mind. So now I'm ready to close the shape. So the way I do that is I just hover my cursor over the first anchor point I made and I hold down control and the icon changes so slight, ever so slightly. So if I click now, that's closed the shape. So with the, um, the shape drawn out of the area I'm interested in, what I'm now gonna do is in these tools here, and if you don't see these, um, these tool, tool options, come to window, dockable dialogues, and make sure tool options is enabled because that's what these are. So I am now going to say selection from path. So that is going to select all the areas inside that shape that I just made. But actually I want to select the areas outside that shape, right? I want these, these bits and these bits around here, not the bits inside. So I now want to invert this selection. So I can do that by going to select, invert, and now that's exactly what I've done. Um, these areas are the ones selected. So now if I make sure that my black areas layer is selected, I can grab my bucket fill tool and make sure that my um, foreground color, so this little swatch here, the one on the sort of top left, that's my foreground color. So if I click it and maybe it was on a different color before, but I just click and drag in this um, color region and down either to the bottom left or bottom right to make sure I have absolute black. Okay. Now if I click in this selected region, it will fill it with black. So essentially if I were to send this out from my projector, there'd be, there would be no light coming from or uh, in these areas. So it's, it's like projecting nothing. Um, so essentially I've made them transparent in my, in my projections. Good, so now I'm going to um, get rid of this selection by going to select none. And now I'm going to um, turn my attention to getting rid of content in some of these windows because let's imagine I want to put some animated characters in the doors, in the windows and things like that. So I want to remove what's inside the, the window panes and in the door, for example. So what I'm gonna do is click off the visibility of my outlines because I think um, they've outlived their usefulness now. I can always turn them back on, but I think I'm going to focus now just more on what's here in, in the content. So let's go about um, blacking out this doorway because it's quite a nice, simple rectangular shape. So much like we did before, I'm going to select the paths tool and just click these corners close the shape. So I'm holding control, clicking on the first uh, anchor point. Maybe I'll just neaten that up a little bit. Okay. And now, um, because before, whereas before I needed to invert that selection, that's why we um, use selection from path. But now actually I can just fill this shape with black. So I can say fill path, um, choose fill style, solid color, and it will be looking to my foreground color, which as we just looked at, we made sure that it was black. So now if I say fill, it's put, um, it's filled that shape with black on my black areas layer. So that's great. But what about for these more complicated shapes? So this was easy. This was just four, just four clicks of the mouse, but some of these shapes are a little bit more intricate and they also involve curved shapes. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm still going to use the um, path paths tool, um, but I'm going to do something slightly different, which is the first, I'll click on this corner, but for the second point, rather than click and release, I'm going to click and hold and then drag off the anchor point. And this um, handle appears, it's called a Bezier handle, and it helps me define curves. So I'm just going to drag that out a little bit 
and another one here. Single click there, click and drag out a curve here, another one here, click and then close close the shape like that. And it does take a little bit of practice getting used to these handles. They are um, a bit uh, foreign if, when you first start using them as a beginner, but you'll soon get the hang of it. Um, so I will just make these shapes, hold control, close the shape, and quickly make another one. Not perfect, but good enough for now. Great. And even though I have made multiple shapes, if I still say fill path, it will fill all of them at once. So I can define as many shapes as I want and then fill them all at the end. So I don't need to create a shape, fill it, create a shape, fill. I can create all of them and then fill it at the end, which is what I'll do now. And I'll fast forward through and you can just see me making some of these other shapes. I'm also going to black out um, this area here as well. And you can see your paths that you've created over here in your paths tab. So this was the first main outline that I made. And then here are the new window um, shapes that I've created. And you could create a new shape if you wanted to start afresh by clicking this icon here. Let's create a new path. Okay. And also if for some reason you wanted to um, delete these paths just to keep things uncluttered, you can click and drag it onto this um, X icon just to get rid of it like that. So um, useful to be able to access your paths here in the paths tab. But heading back over to layers, um, I am liking this so far. Something that I want to do now is for me, my house is semi-detached, so I have a neighbor over here on the left. And actually this hard join um, is not what I want because I actually have sort of trees and shrubs and things like that on this edge. So um, I think that edge is gonna look quite stark. Um, so what I would actually like to do is have a kind of gentle fall off, a sort of um, gradient blend away into black over here on the left hand side. So the way I am going to do that is to create um, a shape again, and I'm going to create a shape that captures that general um, region over here that I want to blend softly into. So I'm going to make a selection from path just to select this area. Then I'm going to go to select further. And I am going to stick with um, 100 pixels for my feather, but you could experiment with, um, with different feather, feather amounts, but let's say 100. And then I'm going to go to the fill, the bucket fill tool. I'm still filling with black as my foreground fill color, which is um, set here in the fill type, foreground color fill minus black. And then just double checking, I'm still on my black areas layer. I'm going to click inside this selected area and it's filled it with black, but because this selection was feathered, it was softened, it just means that there's a nice, gentle, um, soft fall off on this selection. Um, so it's just fading away into black, which is exactly what I want. So now I can get rid of this selection, set it to none. The final thing I would like to look at in terms of making some more of these areas black is if I just check my um, outlines, turn them, their, its visibility back on. Um, some of these shapes here that I've sketched out, these are like plants in pots um, or shrubs and, and things like that. So I don't think I want them to be kind of fully blasted with projection. So what I can do here is click on the paintbrush tool. And um, here you can see this um, Kind of dotted radius that indicates the size of my brush. So if I wanted to make that bigger or smaller, I could change it here. Again, we're in the um, 
kind of like the tool settings, uh, tool options, sorry. So if you don't see these, make sure tool options is checked on. I can change the size here, make it uh, much bigger or make it smaller. I'm fairly happy with that, maybe a little bit larger. I can change the opacity. So if I wanted to paint very faintly, um, I could turn the opacity right down, but I think I will keep it up at 100. I would like it to be a very soft brush. So I'm going to turn the hardness down to something like this. And now I can just, with my uh, cursor, just paint in these areas and it's got that nice fall off to it. So it's a little bit more a gradual fade into the content. And here. And here. And if you're not happy with any of the pixels that you've painted in, you can always select the erase tool, um, which has parameters very similar to the paintbrush that we were just using and just with this eraser tool just paint out the pixels that you're um, not happy with so you can always do that at any point. So that's a way that you can more manually go in and basically paint in areas of black if that's something that you prefer to do even though it is a little bit more manual it can sometimes um, be what you need. Great so I would be finished if I just wanted black in these areas. So if it were important to me simply just to remove areas of projection, then I would say that I'm finished because black just means no, no projection. But if I wanted to take this facade into uh, say another software and maybe yeah, put some animations here in the windows, it would be better for me if these areas were not black, but actually transparent. So how can we do that using the black areas that we've created? Well, the way we do that is right clicking on our black areas layer and using alpha to selection. So basically it's going to take all the areas that have pixels on them on this layer and use it to make a selection. So we're seeing these um, marching ants again. So we know these areas are selected. And then we're going to now select our uh, facade layer. For me, that's the dungeon. And I'm going to right click and say add layer mask. So a mask is essentially a way of defining which areas should be fully opaque and which areas should be transparent. And what you use to sort of drive that transparency is um, the brightness of the pixels you're using where Black pixels mean fully transparent and white mean fully opaque. Uh, hopefully it will become a little bit clearer in a moment. So add layer mask and I want to use the selection that I have. And also I want invert mask to be selected. So make sure that is checked on and go to add and turn off the black areas. And we've succeeded in, let me, rid of my selection. We've succeeded in making all of the areas that were black transparent because what we've done is created a mask where I'm holding, so in order to look at the mask, which has appeared here is a little um, black and white thumbnail, which sits next to my dungeon, which just indicates that it has a mask on it. If I hold down alt and click on that, I can see the mask and these white areas are fully opaque and all the black areas are fully transparent. So that's how the, the mask is working. And now when I export this and bring it like say into After Effects or whatever, I can put animations behind here and um, not worry about any of those black pixels in the way. Fantastic, so now the last step is just to simply export this. Um, so the way I do that is go to File, uh, Export As, and I'm going to call it Dungeon Masked, and it's in a PNG, PNG format, which is brilliant because that supports an alpha channel. Basically, it carries transparency, so it means that I'll be able to um, preserve this transparency in the image so that it will come come through when I use it in, in other software. Um, so it's a PNG. I've given it a new name. Um, you can set a location for it wherever you want, and then export. 
and we have some options but they are all good for me so export and we are done if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video